So I guess the question is, why am I reviewing a three-year-old movie? Because I love it. Captain America the Winter Soldier is a near-perfect convergence of assets for a summer blockbuster film. The movie's efficient and purposeful, and in it we learn that S.H.I.E.L.D., the international good guy shadow army that provides the Marvel Cinematic Universe's connective tissue, has actually been a host for HYDRA, the international bad guy shadow army, for most of its existence. HYDRA has been using Steve, Captain America Rogers, mind-controlled childhood best friend and band of brothers, brother, Bucky the Winter Soldier Barnes to carry out world-altering assassinations for the past 70 years. The way the story plays out goes from personal to grand and back to personal, but never drags in the storytelling. It's a story that's more than a framework off of which to hang set pieces and snarky one-liners, as is often the case in generic big-budget action. Uh, the narrative here is interesting, full of intrigue and disillusionment, betrayal and redemption, but also big set pieces and snarky one-liners. But in this case, these are value adds to Captain America the Winter Soldier as opposed to the main draw. What is a huge draw is that every major player is actually an intrinsically important piece to the machinery that drives this movie. In the lead there is my all-time favorite case of this guy has given life to this intellectual property, Chris Evans' melancholy Captain America, haunted by the loss of his time and sense of place, but still a good man for the sake of being good. He is, of course, the mucilage that holds this film together. It's his relationships that provide the compelling emotional foundation of the film. There is a flashback in the movie that reinforces that Steve and Bucky are the family that you choose that made me... <clears throat> Dude Misty. But it's Cap and Natasha Romanov, Cap and Nick Fury, Cap and Peggy Carter... Cap and his new pal Sam, the Falcon Wilson, even Cap and Remlo. These relationships and interactions drive the film. Of course, I can't talk about the characters and leave out the film's big bad Robert Redford. Robert Redford. This dude is all-weather charm and easy authoritative gravity. Robert Redford's Alexander Pierce is probably the best Marvel villain so far. It's his goal of wanting to make the world a better place through iron-fisted autocracy that is a perfectly understandable and frighteningly real endeavor. The superheroic action also presents itself with a level of faux realism. Movie Cap is 70s TV superhero powerful. He's powerful on old television's budgetarily constrained car metric. You know, he can lift a car or run as fast as a car or jump as far as a car flying from a ramp. Now what looks silly on old TV is transformed with a platinum budget and stellar action direction into a perfect display of how a character like Cap's power should be used cinematically. As compared to a normal human character, he's amazing in skill and in power, but he is just human enough to be in believable peril several times throughout the film. Actually, in my first viewing, I thought that they had killed him at one point near the end of the movie. Hmm. I thought it was done. So uh, at this point I'm off script because uh, usually you'd be presenting shortcomings for a movie uh, in this spot of the review and I don't have any. Uh, is the helicarrier scene a bit much for the tone of the overall movie? Probably. But as it is a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie you have to expect that kind of spectacle as part of your price of admission. Uh, is the film missing some expository connective scenes? Uh, also probably, but in the name of efficiency, I think I can let that one slide. So I think ultimately what you have in the Winter Soldier is uh, a perfect synthesis of gritty fantasy action, circa 20 teens, uh, an interesting story, a very intriguing story, and real human emotion. For my money, Captain America the Winter Soldier is the best of a line of fine movies.